cell cycle has four phases. The first phase is called G1, and what's happening in this phase is growth. The cell is just divided and is in the process of rebuilding organelles. It's gathering resources, it's communicating with the cells around it, and of course, it's conducting cellular respiration. The next phase the cell undergoes is the S stage. And in this phase, we're going to see a continuation of growth. But now the cell's DNA is getting ready to replicate. And in fact, it does replicate. So this is a cell that's gearing up to reproduce. The third phase is G2, and during this phase there is a continuation of growth, but the cell is getting ready to divide, so among the things that it's doing is duplicating organelles. It's also producing a variety of proteins that will help guide the cell through the division process. And the last phase of the cell cycle is the M stage. This is also called the mitotic phase, where first the nucleus divides, then the cell itself divides. So let's take a closer look at these phases. So we just looked at the four phases of the cell, and three of those phases are occurring during what's called interphase. So G1, the S stage, and G2 comprise interphase. And in the last slide, we talked about how during these phases a cell is growing and replicating DNA and making organelles and proteins. And there are some other important functions that are happening as well. So what are these other important functions? Well, G1 is considered a growth phase, and at this point in the phase, a cell has just undergone cell division, and it's going to be making additional organelles to ensure its ability to function. So if it's a muscle cell, it may be making more mitochondria, for example. Among all the things a cell is expected to do, a cell also has a responsibility to replace itself when it dies, which it will eventually do. So the cell will also be gearing up for cell division. During the G1 phase, the cell has to pass a primary checkpoint to ensure it's in good enough shape to reproduce. So what does that mean? Well, it means that an, it's going to be evaluating certain growth signals. It's checking to make sure the environment has enough resources to support a new cell. And it's going to make sure the DNA is in good shape as well. So if any of these things aren't working out, the cell will enter a phase called G0, and it will not replicate. However, if everything looks good, and there are plenty of these proteins called cyclins, the cell moves to the S stage. And then we have to ask ourselves, what's happening here? Well, this is going to be a continuation of growth, but now our DNA has a stamp of approval, and the cell is assembling the necessary proteins to make more DNA, and the cell will eventually replicate that DNA. So even though the cell division is a ways off, the DNA has already been reproduced here in the S stage. Now after this, the cell is going to move into G2, where it's doubling organelles and making proteins that will help guide the division process. Here at G2, there's another checkpoint, another opportunity to ensure that the DNA is in good shape. If at this point things don't look good, the cell will not replicate. However, if everything does look good, the cell will move to the next phase. One of the important aspects to understand during the cell cycle is what's happening with DNA. So let's see what's going on here. During G1, we have our strands of DNA, a purple one from, uh, let's say, mama, and a blue one from daddy. And together, they're going to make up 46 chromosomes. In the S stage, we're going to duplicate our DNA. So we're going to start out with our two strands, purple and blue, and then we're going to duplicate them, which means that we're going to make another identical purple chromosome and another identical blue chromosome. So how many chromosomes do we have now? Well, we have a purple set and a blue set, and between the two, we still have 46 chromosomes. But now we have 92 chromatids. Well, how can that be if we've duplicated everything? Well, think of it this way. If you had a set of instructions that consisted of 46 steps listed on two pages, if you copied those two pages, the instructions will still consist of only 46 steps. We didn't magically create another 46 new steps just because we copied the old ones. We just have two sets of the same 46. And the same is true with our DNA. So 46 chromosomes, but 92 chromatids.
And this newly replicated DNA is going to move into G2 with great big plans to divide someday. Now that we've completed interphase, our cell is moving into the M stage. And the first part of the M stage is mitosis, and this is going to consist of four steps. The first step is prophase. Now before I get too far along, I want to bring up a cell and talk about the important players during the rest of the cell cycle. Within the cell is the nucleus, and that's where our DNA is located. And also within the nucleus is a structure called the nucleolus. Now this is going to be functional once the cell is up and running and doing some stuff. It makes proteins and things like that. We don't need to worry about that right now. And then we have our genetic material, which is called our chromosomes or our DNA. And finally, we have these little structures called centrioles. Now these centrioles are organelles that are going to help guide the DNA through the steps of mitosis. Now together these are the parts of the cell that are going to undergo a lot of changes during the rest of the cell cycle. And while we're here, let's get some language straight about DNA. The word chromosome is used to describe a collection of genetic code or DNA, and it can refer to an entire genetic code or even just a section of it. Every cell in our bodies, um, except for gametes, and I think those are going to be covered in the next chapter, but for now, every cell in the body is going to contain two sets of chromosomes, one from the mama and one from the daddy. And together, the purple chromosome and the blue chromosome are going to make up 46 chromosomes found in every cell. So we're going to get 23 from mom and 23 from dad. Now most of the time our chromosome is a big jumbled mess like you see shown on the cell on the left. Only when the cell has duplicated the DNA do we get to see it clearly. And this is because when it gets duplicated it gets packaged and wound really tightly in order to undergo mitosis. So it kind of undergoes what's called a super coiling and uh, as a result uh, it gets real distinct and we can take a peek at it under a microscope. All right, during mitosis, these are going to be duplicated. Our purple and our blue are going to be duplicated. And we're going to end up with an identical purple set and an identical blue set. And once the DNA has replicated, we get to introduce a new word. And that word is chromatid. Now, once a uh, DNA has been duplicated, each strand is going to be called a chromatid. And because they've come from existing DNA, they're going to be called sister chromatids. So the two purples are called sister chromatids. The two blues are called sister chromatids. Now, believe it or not, we still have only 46 chromosomes. But now we have 92 chromatids, or 92 pieces of genetic code. And um, each Duplicated section is going to be held together by a structure called a centromere. And as if all of this isn't confusing already, as long as these identical strands are held together, the whole thing is going to be called a chromosome. So we have a purple chromosome with its 46 pieces of genetic code, 23 of which are identical to the other 23. And we have a blue chromosome with its 46 pieces of genetic code, 23 of which are identical to the other 23. Now there's one more piece of chromosome anatomy I want to address, and that's these yellow dots right here. These are called kinetochores, and the protein spindles that are going to serve as guides during division, the things that uh, are going to result as um, part of the centrioles. Uh, these are going to act like tractor beams. They're going to attach to the kinetic cores, and they're going to pull the DNA to what will eventually become two different cells. So back to prophase. There's a lot that's happening here, so let's take a look at all of this. So there's going to be some big changes happening in the nucleus. First of all, we're going to see the membrane around the nucleus disappear, as well as the nucleolus. The chromosomes are going to become visible. Normally they aren't. And the centrioles are going to move apart so they can get into position for the next step. And finally, we're going to start to see the formation of those mitotic spindles, those proteins that are going to act like tractor beams.
Now the next step is metaphase, and what's happening here is that the spindles will attach to the kinetochores of the chromosomes, and the chromosomes are going to be positioned in the middle of the cell in what's called the metaphase plate. So we're getting ready to yank those chromatids apart, and this is how our cell is going to look while it's in metaphase. Anaphase is the third step in, this theory, in the series, and this is where the chromatids are pulled apart. The fourth step is called telophase, and here we have the appearance of what's called the cleavage furrow, the reformation of the nucleus membrane and the nucleolus, the complete separation of the chromatids back into the jumbled mess of DNA strands that we saw in the beginning. So now it's starting to look like we're going to have a, a, a couple of cells. So, what about those chromosomes? Well, in prophase, we have just what we had at the end of G2, which is 46 chromosomes made of 92 chromatids. And in metaphase, also 46 chromosomes and 92 chromatids. But in anaphase, we yank those chromatids apart, and now we have 92 chromosomes made up of 92 chromatids. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And in telophase, the same thing. And here we are at the last step, cytokinesis, and her cell is getting all jazzed up. And then it divides, and now we have two cells. And what about that DNA? Each cell now has 46 chromosomes. And this concludes another exciting installation by the PowerPoint styling of Rebecca Oliver.